Let's have a look at some of the stories that abound. I hope to put a smile on your face this afternoon with my look at some good news. Now, this is a story I saw on Saturday, uh, one of those stories that reminds us that there are plenty of good people out there. A young mum who was with her children at a Tesco checkout in Plymouth had her card declined. She repeatedly checked her phone to try to get the payment through, but eventually staff started that horrible moment of unpacking her bags and returning the goods to the shelves. Well, a man in the queue stepped forward and said he would pay for the shop, thought to be around £100. He had his own children with him, and one of them took the lady's children to the confectionery bit so they could pick out a chocolate bar. He didn't want any appreciation and just left the shop. We just feel he deserves recognition for what he did. Those are the words of uh, two people who uh, stood a little further back in the queue at the time but could see it all unfolding in front of them. The couple say that the young woman's shop came to around £100 and consisted of many items including bits for the children such as nappies and yoghurts. And one couple who saw it said we didn't, he didn't want any recognition for what he did. He just left with a smile on his face. And uh, that story's put a smile on that's such oh. a nice story. I once had somebody help me when I was in a supermarket queue in an unnamed supermarket trying to buy a bottle of champagne. I was cooking a lovely thank you dinner for my cousin. And the woman at the till wouldn't sell it to me because she didn't believe that I was old enough to buy it. Which is great. That. I mean, you know, I've been Ridiculous. old enough to buy alcohol for 20 years. But, um, but no, she, she wouldn't believe me at all. And a man in the queue offered to buy it for me. And, uh, and I thought that was so nice. But no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow him to. So I actually didn't buy my champagne or at least not at that store. Great story. Oh. Well, at least it, it, I, I look young. Great. Can I get on? Yeah, go on. Thank you. <laughs> now, one of Britain's beaches has had a rather unenthusiastic review from an American online. Now, take a look at this. Nick Alexander's been documenting his experiences in the UK after moving from Miami, and a trip to Western Supermare wasn't a day to remember. Made a quick stop at a rest stop to use the bathroom. Check out the gang in the back of the car. Everybody was vibing. And then we were off to the beach. We thought it was going to be an easy walk. Everybody was vibing. And then I pulled up on some goddamn mud. But where I come from, beaches don't look like this. I didn't get to go swimming. I lost my wallet. The sun started to make people act funny. It just wasn't for me. I know. <laughs> Bit harsh. Bit harsh. The tourist office at Western Supermare. If, you, if, you, if you're watching, yeah. I'm sure you can tell us it's well, not as bad as he made it out to be. Yeah, He's not happy, like, let's face it. It's well, a river estuary. It's I not mean, Miami, you know. Well, it's not Miami, but we love it even more, can I just say, in defence of the southwest and all things wonderful in that part of the world. Yeah, but that mud is a bit of a... It adds fun to it adds fun to the trip, you know. If you, I remember well, when I was a kid, stuck, and had those little frog in, it's wellies. really lovely, yeah. Yeah, I lost a frog welly once in similar circumstances. You know, there's little frog wellies that kids wear. Right. I had to be pulled out, like, boop, out of the wellies because I was really entrenched. Sorry. <laughs> right, uh, let's bring you some good news on the job front. GMI Construction has just been awarded a major new contract by the Symphony Group. Now, that's the UK's largest privately owned manufacturer of fitted kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom furniture. It's to develop a huge new production warehouse facility at its headquarters in Barnsley. And the build is scheduled to take 38 weeks, and the development is expected to create hundreds of jobs. Now, the company has operated for years on what is former colliery land and is now an industrial park. So that's good news. And uh, you may have seen this uh, yesterday, but it's worth reminding that uh, McDonald's has announced plans to hire 20,000 more workers and open 50 new restaurants in the UK and Ireland this year. The fast food chain plans to set up new franchises in dozens of locations across the country with 50 new outlets planned in 2021 and another 100 over the following two years. McDonald's will hire 20,000 staff and open 150 new restaurants as the lockdown eases. They say those positions, by the way, are not to replace jobs that were lost during the pandemic. And there are huge employer McDonald's in this country. Oh, yay. More wafts of, like, beef burgers in oh. the air and paper I, on the floor. I should floor. have thought better. OK, OK, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Descending all right. across the country. Oh, but a Big Mac. Oh. Now, <laughs> moving on to diabetes. There you are. That, that exactly. cheers you. There, there you are. To diabetes. I, I, I put this together without thinking. Anyway, <laughs> diabetes experts say they're cautiously optimistic about a new quick and painless sensor that measures blood sugar in human sweat. Now, it may mean far fewer finger pricks for the millions of people who live with diabetes. 
Monitoring blood sugar to make sure it remains in the target range is at the heart, of course, of managing diabetes, but the pain and inconvenience of daily finger pricks can be a bit of a deterrent for many people. Now, this is a new touch-based test which measures blood sugar in sweat. It applies a personalized algorithm that correlates it with glucose in the blood. It's said to be more than 95% accurate at predicting blood glucose levels before and after meals. Now, it's not available yet. Large-scale tests still need to be carried out. But if uh, you are living with that condition, it does offer hope of a, an easier way forward. Now, moving on, how's this for a lockdown haircut? Look at this. <laughs> uh, this is a dog that has, uh, it was a stray dog, and when it was handed in at the rescue center, it lost three kilograms worth of dreadlocks after a much needed makeover by the people who rescued him. Uh, his name is Simon, it really is Simon. <laughs> it's an 11-year-old Shih Tzu and was taken to an animal shelter in Kansas City in the United States last week. That, that video uh, posted on TikTok uh, shows the vets giving Simon the care he needed, removing all the excess hair and his dreadlocks. It took two staff more than two hours to remove that matted fur. Changed him. Good. Well, Simon's looking much better for it. Simon could do with a good haircut. <laughs> Uh, more dogs. I know you hate dogs. That's part, part of it. I'll put them in. Anyway, uh, as from that stray dog to police dogs, West Midlands Police have welcomed one of its largest ever litter of spaniel puppies. Even better, they're all being named in honour of inspirational figures who've been affected by motor neuron disease. Let's just take a look. So we have Doddy and Burrow, followed by Darby and Len, Rimmer and Moss, Primrose and Hawkey. And finally, Blue and Rollo. How can you not smile? Well, they are nice like that no, when they literally awesome. make squeaky noises. It's just when they get bigger and start, well, springing like springer spaniels do. Oh, I thought you were talking about the police officers. No, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no. no uh, yeah, but, but police are very good with dogs. They train them well and look after them. Yeah, and it's nice no, to see. I do, but do you know what? I do think dogs are utterly remarkable animals. Maybe it's just that I've never grown up with them and so I just became a tragic cat lady that I've kind of picked my team. You're a bit of a tragic cat lady, aren't you? Sitting there with, yeah. Oh dear. But you remember last week uh, of, of one of our first good news uh, shows, we, we, we brought the news of Digby to you. Remember the dog that when was taken, a lady was threatening suicide on a bridge. Yes. And the fire and rescue team took Digby along yeah. and she saw Digby and smiled and they were able to talk her back over the railings and, and, and eventually back, back to safety. And, and I, I like dog stories. Yeah. I mean, let, let me know, GB News, GB Views at GB News, uh, if you think we do too many dog stories. And to wind him does, up, but. please send in some cat stories because so far Simon covers dogs being excellent and heroic and then the cat story he covers is when someone cremated the wrong pet. It's now, <laughs> and then it made him cry with that laughter. That made me cry with laughter cry and was picked up and we were watching on Radio 4 today the next morning. We saw you pick that story up. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was a good story. Now, it was a good story. <laughs>